up third down and about two. Harding's defense going with a 4-4-3 also. Up front, Jeff Wilson, Eddie Smith, Daryl Gray, and Billy Winchester. Linebackers, Chad Armstrong, Antonio Walker, O'Neill Falcon, and Damon Bullock. And the setbacks, Dwayne Hill, Anthony James, and Terrace Jones. It is third down and about two needed for the first. Three backs behind the quarterback, Derek McGowan. McGowan gives near snow. Near side, that was Holder that got the carry inside the 40, so he picked up first down yardage and got more. Let's see where they mark it. Marked it at the 37, so it's a gain of about five. And that is a good carry once again for Luther Holder. It's interesting to see both of these teams clicking at the same time. But not necessarily surprising, both with... Uh, dangerous offenses. McGowan is back to pass. He's, He's throwing long near side. He wants Howell oh, again. Man. And Howell is out of reach. And uh, number 33, Dwayne Hill, made a lunge at him at the last minute to make sure he wasn't going to get to it, but that pass was thrown high. He had beaten his man on the post pattern, too. Howell wide open. That's Lawrence Howell. But uh, while you're paying attention to how, don't forget on the other side, uh, Larry Thomas, number 23. It's going to be 83 for West Mech on the other side. Well, oh, that's Joey Hustedler. No, I'm sorry. 83 for West Mech is... Fred Snow. Yeah, Fred Snow. Oh, nobody told about, said anything about Ray Hughes going right off the right side. And Ray Hughes is all the way down to the 21. So a big gainer. Big Ray. 16-yard gain. Chad Armstrong made the hit defensively. Big Ray wants to let things happen offensively. He was a defensive star here for two years, if I'm not mistaken. Jeff played defensive back. And now they're giving him a chance to run the ball. And again, we can see why. Hughes with a big gap on the right side. Of course, Luther Holder was a linebacker, a big star in defense, and he's playing offense now. Mm. That's a touchdown if he keeps it. Yeah. Good oh, run by Hughes. He is down close. He went from the 22-yard line all the way down. Let's see what they're going to mark it. He just got a good hole and did a fine job of running. Winchester was the man that got there defensively. Hughes must have figured that he's only going to get the ball a few times in this game, and he's going to make the most of it. Yet they keep opening up two gaping holes, one on the right side. It looked like the same play going the other way, and Hughes takes him down inside the five-yard line. That is a gain of, looks like, from the 22 to the 3. They got about 19. That time they're going to give up the middle. That was Hughes again. I guess they feel like they owe it to him since he's picked up two big gainers. That's going to be second and goal to go from about the 3-yard line. So they didn't get anything that time. The defense was able to get to him. McGowan needs to go with the triple option. Right now. Try it twice. I think it's, I don't see how it can fail two times in a row the way he runs it. They go to near side. Use defense says no way. They are there. And use cannot get through. There was a penalty flag that time. And when you see the defense get through the line of scrimmage, that, oh, well, we're going to back West Mech up five <laughs> yards. That's going to back it up, but considering the last two plays they've tried to beat their way through, they've been shut down, so that might be to their benefit, give them a little more field to work with. So we'll take it back five yards, to mark it at the 10. They don't want that much field to have to work with. The illegal procedure is against the offense, so it is going to be second down and goal from 10. We'll see what McGowan and company elect to do now. You've got more field to work with now. You can pass if you want to, or you can go on the ground again. Second down and 10. Three backs behind the quarterback. They'll probably stay with the ground. And back to pass is the quarterback. He's going to keep himself. Now he wants to run, but he's having trouble and taken out of bounds. 82 is there. Flags are down. And 82, I think, is going to be called off the face mask. Uh, no, they're going to no. call that on the quarterback. No, quarterback. allen has got the face mask. He got the face mask of 82 on the defense. I think they're going to decline this penalty. That was Jeff Wilson who came over 
And we had the jersey of McGowan and saying, I'm going to take you out of bounds. McGowan grabbed the face mask and said, no, you're not. And a little tug of war, but that'll back things up. I'm surprised they took that family. It's still going to give them a down. They lost five yards on that play, but they uh, <laughs> took that penalty. Yeah, they took it the penalty, yeah. It's still second down, but now it's second and goal from the 28. Can you believe that? They were down inside the three-yard line. And they're fastly going backwards. Time to go back to Ray Hughes with those two big gappers. I think he was about right here the, uh, just a while ago. Two big running plays. He's got some good-sized people in front of him now to help him out. <laughs> so let's see what he likes to do. Back to pass. He's got some time. Then he got in trouble, lost his footing, and before he could get it back, 58 on the defense came through and decked him. Good job by Brian Flaherty. Yeah, Brian Flaherty, who is in now on defense. He's one of the substitutes tonight defensively for Harding. So it is now third down and goal from the 35. I did not see West Mech field goal kicker warm up before the game. And I'm sure they need to pick up at least 10 to 15 yards to give him an honest chance at, at uh, kicking the field goal here. Well, they've got Fred Snow on one side. They're going to have Lawrence Howell on the other side. So let's see what they like to do on third and goal. Back to pass. Some pressure coming. Flushes He's going to run it. So he'll run it. And he got around a corner. That's speed to talk about. But he doesn't get away. Gets to the 15. And the defense the secondary comes up to make to stop on him but a great run I'm sure that they have some control plays where it looks like McGowan's going to roll out two pass and then he takes off running but that time he was on his own he got flushed out of the pocket early but picked up 15 yards and we're going to get a field goal attempt by number 85 for West Met and Jeff that is you tell me who that is. That is Doug Miller. Doug Miller. So for Doug from the 22, make that a... McGowan's the holder, though. You can expect yeah. anything. It's and he looks like he wide hooked it. Left. Yeah. Goes wide to the left. And so, 7.47 remaining here in the first half. And West Mech fails to score. Harding will take over. First down and 10. With the ball at their own 20. So first down and 10 for the Harding Rams. And what really hurt West Mac that time, West Mac got all the way down at first and goal at the three yard line. And then penalty after penalty, before you know it, they're back close to midfield trying to get down there. And no way the defense is going to let it happen. They give you the short and keep you from getting the long. First and 10. Delay draw. Straight up the middle, Byers gets out to the 24-yard line, which will be a pickup of about four. That's a great play that, that you can call by Harding because Houston's got such a strong arm. You have to try to get back to him in a hurry, and then they set up the pass so well that they're, that they're going to go deep, they're going to pass a lot, and then they go to the draw play. That's what you do. That's when the draw play is effective. And it goes to the near side. Kenny Stevenson gets the quick out pass. Close for six yards. Well, no, let's see. That's close to ten yards for first down. Stevenson. They're just not they're just not tight enough on the wide out for Harding. And Houston's picking them apart. He doesn't even have to be throwing the ball well. They're so mm -hmm. wide open on the outside. Yeah. Can't blame Harding for keeping, uh, keep going back to that play because uh, they're picking up such good yards, six and eight yards on a little turnout. It's uh, really no defense for it the way they're playing, the way their defense is set up. Byers turns one up inside, picks up about eight yards. Good carry across the 40 to the 42. So Byers continues to ramble. He carried about 11 times, close to 67 yards rushing unofficially. Houston has thrown 11 times, yeah. completing seven of those passes. He has about 109 yards in completion. So the offense moving very well for the Harding Rams. 6.41 left in the first half. They lead by seven. They'd like to make it worse. They go straight up the middle with a keeper by the quarterback, Houston. 
and he's going to pick up a first down. They get to the 46-yard line. And that is going to be a gain of about four yards. That was just a quarterback keeper up the middle. And again, that's to keep the pass rush, pass rush honest by West Mac. They can't have any stunning and blitzing as long as Houston is pulling the trick that he's pulling offensively. Fires running the way he runs. They've got to honor the run, and Houston's just picking them apart. And they've got two receivers to the far side, one to the near side, and lots of pressure. Wallace came in, Scott Wallace intercepted. And no surprise, Ray Yu saw oh, Ray Yu fall down. He tried to cut, got hit, Ray was already down, and that's Ray Yu going to sit there. Ray Hughes was playing center field. Anthony Houston was under all kinds of pressure. Big number 76 got in there defensively for West Neck, and that is Wallace. And number 68, Raymond Crenshaw from Harding, got 15 yards packed onto that. Nice play by Ray. Yard touchdown pass from Derrick McGowan to Lawrence Howell, and we saw the. Uh, the 51-yard play, the pass from Houston to Stevenson, and the pitch out to Walker that went the distance for the touchdown. And of course, two more touchdowns scored by Jonathan Byers, a run of three yards and a run of one yard. And uh, he got 21 to seven as we get set to start the second half. We say very big series of downs for West Mech because they've got to score and get back in the ball game. That's block Brian Flaherty, number 58. Harding going to do the kickoff duty. Luther Holder is the deep man for West Mecklenburg, number three. Also back there, number 22, Howell. And we're just waiting for the officials to give us the indication, and we'll be underway in a second half. Hadn't been able to get it back to Holder yet. I'm sure that Howell, if I'm not mistaken, has taken all the kickoffs right. back. As far as I can recall. And they're back there discussing things here. So, well, let's see. What do you think? Should I take it? You take it? Okay. okay. You, you, you've gotten some pretty good yardage. Maybe I ought to let you take it. That's a possibility. But if I'm not sure that they're thinking <laughs> that it's going to be a possibility they're going to have to score it. What happened was they, they kicked this ball off just a tad too early and they started the game clock, which means we have to get back to 12 minutes, which we have, and we are underway. And the kick by Flaherty. And we're underway in the second half. It's short, fielded by Howell. And Howell is across. Ooh, taken down, pulled across by number 80. He was down at the 30, but 80 pulled him over, and he got about four yards on the tackle. That was Vincent Guy, number 80. We call Vincent Harding. Guy's number quite a lot tonight. He has been a sharp player, sharp performer out there on special teams. He's one of those guys that just gets down and makes every tackle. So first down and 10, the West Bank Indians with the ball at their own 34 and a very key possession. Fred Snow, 83, is lined up to the near side. And Lawrence Howell, number 22, to the far side. Three backs behind McGowan, who gives to Hughes. And Hughes gets his way out to the 40-yard line. So that's a pickup of about six. Good carry by Ray Hughes. And that looks like we're going to get that number in just a minute. Well, we broken out of the huddle yet. It looks like... 32 for Harding with a nice wrap-up. That was O'Neill Falk. And, and O'Neill was an all-conference linebacker a year ago, so has been uh, well-known for the Rams. Second down and four. Mm. And a quarterback got in trouble that time and got stopped in the backfield. He waited too long. Defense by O'Neill Falk in right. the backfield. Falk and got through in the sack against uh, Derek McGowan. That's going to bring up third down and seven. The Harding defense wanting to come up with a big play, shut down West Mech here. It would really be a blow to West Mech if Harding were able to stop them and then come down and score again. Third down and eight. Big, big play for the Indians right now. McGowan, back to pass. He's going to have some time. Now he's got some pressure. He rolls, gets the pass away, deep to Howell, and it's going to be intercepted. Number 33 was able to come up with it. Good defensive play by Dwayne Hill, and we got a flag down. That was Howell with the late hit. And it was Dwayne Hill down there, and I think number eight, Terrace Jones, was also there. So they had double coverage on Howell. Virtually no way he was going to be able to come up with the ball. It would have been perfect, and it was thrown a little long and ended up with uh, in the hands of Hill. There you see the penalty against Wes Meck after the interception. And so Harding gets the turnover. 
and that is a very big play. West Mac got the ball first in the second half, could not do anything with it, and now they have to turn it over. With a 14-point lead, the Rams go to work. With McGowan's scrambling ability, it allowed him extra time to throw, but uh, just threw it in too much coverage. It was triple coverage down that time on Howell, picked off by Hill. Houston on first down, throwing out complete to Calvin Smith. And he's got first down yardage and more as he gets out close to midfield. Make it a gain of 15. And that is the same type thing they did so effectively. They're going to tack on 15 more yards. you got to learn you can't hit the man out of bounds. That play is going to get called a lot because there is a lot of uh, players getting hurt on that type of play when he... Yep. Well, let's make that a face mask. Face mask penalty is the call. Sounds like a personal foul to me. Anybody grab my face mask? They're going to chalk <laughs> off 15 yards. So it uh, was a flagrant face mask. They used the face mask to bring the man down. And that moves it inside the 40 to the 37. And it's basically just the same type of thing they did in the first half so effectively, in which Houston completed 9 of 13 passes, 169 yards, and had the one big touchdown pass, 51 yards. They come out and do the same kind of thing they did, and it works. Pitch out, fires. Byers has a seam, and Byers has got good yardage to the 30. And that's one thing that you don't need to give Anthony Houston. That's any help getting downfield on personal <laughs> fouls and face masks. That's right. He does, does it quite well on his own. You don't need to help him out any. Seven-yard carry by Byers. He had 86 yards in the first half on 12 carries. So that's going to be seven more added on to that. We'll push him up to about 93 yards on the night. He scored twice on touchdown runs of one yard and three yards. Harding is, or Houston is pretty good from this range and going for the end zone. Well, that time they're not gonna go anywhere. Tripped up is the quarterback, uh, Houston, and the man that came through and made sure he was down was Luther Holder, number three. He could pick up the blitz coming and there wasn't anything he could do about it. When he made his move, he tripped coming out of, from up under center. And he was to say, nobody stopped Holder and Holder was there. That's an effective play for Westmack. They're going to have to blitz. They're going to have to take the chance. You give him too much time, and he's, he's devastating. That's right. You've got to do something to try to stop him. You've got to take some, some risks here. Oh, they're going to go the short pass, complete to Smith. And Smith is down to the 20. So that turns out to be a gain of 17 to Calvin Smith. Houston picked up the blitz early. He could see the holder was coming again. And by the time holder realized it, Houston had audible that play. It was too late. A little turn in, a little look in by uh, 22 from Harding, and he picks up 17 big ones. 201 yards passing unofficially now for Anthony Houston. Back to pass again to the sideline, complete to Stevenson, who shrugs the tackle, and he's going to be go out of bounds, I guess. Let's That's see Johnson. Where. Yes, Johnson, I'm sorry. Number 11, Robert Johnson. And Johnson got down, what, where is that, about the 15? So I'll mark it around the 13-yard line. So they got, what, about seven, it looked like, on that. Byers going to take it in for a first down, and they can't get him stopped. He gets down inside the 10 to the 6-yard line. And a good gainer by Byers. Went from the 15 to the 6, so that's 9, maybe 10 yards, and Byers continues to run hard. I don't know how you stop an offense like that, Jeff. You've got a, a kid that can... <laughs> Byers has now got uh, unofficially 102 yards rushing. So. It is first down and goal. Byers again cuts inside and gets it to about the 3-yard line. Maybe close to the 2. Let's see where they're going to mark it. The offensive line of Harding has done a great job, except for a few pass plays where uh, the blitz has caught Houston. Their running offensive blocking has been sensational the whole ball game. They're a short gainer that time, and it will be second down and goal to go for the Rams. This could be uh, a very big score. Give them a three touchdown margin. Byers near side, keeps fighting, and he's in. And Jonathan Byers from three yards out is in for the touchdown, his third of the night. And that will give the Harding Rams a 27-7 to 7 advantage. 
A punishing runner, Mr. Byers. You can see uh, a West Mech man down on. He's down on the field right now. We can't get his number, but he tried to throw that helmet in there around those churning kneecaps of Byers. Who, you just can't take the kid down high. You got to go after the legs. He kept them things pumping like pistons, Jeff, and walked right on in the end zone. He runs as hard as anybody we've seen in this league. That's right. Great runner in Byers, and uh, he just ran over people and fought his way to the end zone. As we say, it's now a 20-point difference in the ball game. And really, it has been a closer game than the score would indicate. As we said twice, West Mecklenburg had the ball inside the Harding 10, and on both those occasions came up empty. Penalties uh, contributed to stopping those two drives. Coach Hambacher's defense has been unable to stop Harding. Now his offense has got to get in gear if they're going to stay in the ballpark. If they don't, uh, we're going to see a big crowd leave here at the end of the third quarter because Harding is on track right now. And of course, you know, that when we came into the ball game, it was a game that was built to be very exciting, and it certainly had to be a game built to be explosive offensively, and that it has been. Both teams have done well offensively, but as we said, the opportunities missed by West Mecklenburg inside the 10 have been the telling tale right now. And of course, the turnover, as they had the opening possession here in the second half, to give Harding the ball, and Harding just takes it right down and scores. That offense that Harding has is very, very tough to stop. We haven't seen anybody stop it, have we? They've been beat twice this year, out of them. And a uh, good look at Coach Knotts there that's put together a game plan that's up to seven minutes and 35 seconds left in the third quarter, has 27 points on the board against an exciting West Mech team so far this year. But uh, tonight, they run into a buzzsaw. But you know, you look at the Indians and, and they are record overall is seven and one, three and one in conference, but they haven't had to face a team the caliber of Harding this season yet. The toughest opponent they have faced is West Charlotte, and that was a loss for them, 14 to seven. Their wins came over Hickory, South Point, Garinger, South Mech, Crest, East Gaston, and Olympic. And Olympic probably the second toughest team they had faced, but Olympic started that game without their starting quarterback. So they had their share of problems. So this by far has been the toughest overall team that the Indians have faced, and Harding has just been playing for yeah. all tonight. I like to be uh, Anthony Houston's agent when he comes out of college. I'd be retiring now. You could send my check down to Acapulco because that's, uh, that's where he could spend a lot of time. This kid's going to be, if you hadn't seen him in person, folks, he's better in person than he is on TV. <laughs> And, you know, the word is, uh, a surprising word, Tom, about the two quarterbacks in tonight's game. Uh, you would think uh, everything has been said about Anthony Houston this, Anthony Houston that, but it is Derek McGowan that is being looked at by one of the more promising schools. I understand that North Carolina State has been looking at Derek McGowan uh, rather handily, showing uh, some sincere interest maybe in uh, a lot of people wonder, is Derek McGowan the kind of quarterback that the NC State would be able to go with? You know, he, he doesn't um, necessarily have the kind of arm you would expect uh, a big college, Division I college to uh, require, but he's got that great running ability. Kind of was like the kind of quarterback you might see at Oklahoma or someplace like that. Well, they can take a kid like McGowan. What they're looking for is great athletic ability. He's got that. He's got all the tools. Maybe he doesn't have the type of arm that Houston has, but what they're looking for is a man that they can put and try out at different positions. There's a lot of high school quarterbacks that go to even up as high as the pros as split ends or up tailback. So right. they could use McGowan in that facility. Whenever you've got a multifaceted player like McGowan, it's interesting. It's yeah. interesting how they can use him. Okay, and we have word on the injured player for West Mech. It is number 34, Melton, that is down. And that is James Melton. And as much time and care as they're taking, Jeff, this is, this is a serious injury. They certainly have to hope that it isn't a severe one, but as you said, they've been tending to him for a good bit of time now. While we have a break, we remind you that next week we close out our regular season here of Hometown Cable 3 Game of the Weeks at Myers Park. We'll be taking a look at the Myers Park Mustangs playing host to the West Charlotte Lions. And as we wait for the uh, 
result on this injury. We're going to take a break and 27 to 7 the score. We'll be back after this. Hi, I'm Bobby Jones, spokesman for the Charlotte Parks and Recreation Department's Youth Sports Coaches Certification Program. If you are coaching a youth sport, I encourage you to take advantage of this training program. Learn how to develop effective practices, administer proper first aid, and improve your coaching techniques. Call 336-2584 for details. Get ready! When we move, we move fast. When we hit, we hit with irresistible force. Adventure training in the Army National Guard. We're back here at West Mecklenburg High School as we're in the second half. 27 to 7 the score in the ball game, but the more important concern down on the field right now is James Melton, number 34 for the West Mech Indians, who has just been taken off the field on a stretcher, so he has suffered a severe injury. We don't know right now the, the details on the injury, but we certainly hope that is not a severe one. But anytime you have to take someone off on the stretcher, it doesn't look good. Number 25 adds the extra point on the touchdown for Harding, and Harding is up 28 to 7 with 7:35 to play in the third quarter of this ball game. And of course, Harding just drove the ball downfield after the West Mac Indians got the opening possession of the second half. Tom, they couldn't do anything with it. They tried to air it out. The interception happened, and the Rams just took it right down the field. And now you're looking at a 20 one point deficit in a ball game that means everything to your team and uh, nothing has has worked uh, as far as getting the ball in the end zone they've had the ball down close twice failed on both those occasions to get it in and now uh, everything has fallen apart for the West Meg Indians and don't look for Harding to let up we saw him put 49 points on the board they're not afraid to uh, run the score up and of course, they know how dangerous uh, Derek McGowan and company can be. So you're right. They're nope. about to let up, especially in a game that means as much to them because they want to win uh, every game they've got left because it means a chance to have the home advantage. There we have a missed, uh, mishandling of a kickoff. West Mech is able to get back control, but they're very deep in the, in the hole again. It was First, Bill Stratford. Yeah, number 10, Bill Stratford. And so that's going to put it at the 15, and again, they're in the hole. Well, what it, what it does to West Mecklenburg, it takes them off out of their offensive scheme. They like to pass when they want to pass, but now it's put them in the, in the condition. They're a ball control team, and now they're going to have to do things kind of out of their, out of their, out of sync. They're going to have to pass some on first down. They're not going to be able to go to the triple option as much. The more time they uh, run the ball, the, the less more, time they have to come back. That's right. It takes right at 30 seconds of play every time they run the ball off of the clock, and that's only playing in the Harding's hands. Harding is a come-from-behind team. I don't think that West Mecklenburg has that ability because they're down by three touchdowns. That's a lot of, a lot of room to make up against a, right. a team that can bury as quick as Harding can. And they went on the ground that time to use, and use got a little bit of yardage, picked up uh, about two, so it's going to be second down and eight. And McGowan to the near side. Cuts it upfield. He's got some room, and McGowan is going to be taken down, stopped finally at about the 35. So McGowan does a fine job of running, picks up about 16 yards. And McGowan is an effective player there. He's got 87 yards unofficially on nine carries. And he's deceiving, as you say, with that speed. He'll move it across, and then he'll cut up field on you and accelerate. And just when you think you've got him, he gets away. That's what State's looking in when they're looking at a, at a prospect. He's going to be a runner at State. I don't think he's going to be their number one quarterback. They're going to move him to another position, get the ball in his hands 10 or 12 times a game, and uh, see if he can make things happen. Well, Harding got a little anxious on defense that time and jumped early, so a penalty will go against the defense, which will help West Mac out a little bit and move the ball up. We talked about the playoff picture, the importance of this ball game. Uh, the loser in the ball game, of course, would have two conference losses, and only two teams can go to the playoffs from the Tri County. West Charlotte is a team with only one conference loss, and uh, they're playing North Mech this week. And of course, if West Charlotte wins this week, and then Harding can win tonight and next week, as expected against East Gaston, then the Rams and the Lions would tie for the conference uh, first place. 
and that would give Harding the regular season championship, which means they would be at home in the first round of the playoffs. West Meck needs a win tonight to stay in that race, and then, of course, they have North Meck next week. They go on the ground again, though. One ask uh, this going to the ground is not going to do anything for them, and they bang in uh, maybe a couple out of that. They've got to get the ball in the air because they've got to produce some points, and it has to come quickly. Got Snow on one side. They've got Howell on the other. McGowan, three backs behind him. Give up the middle. Luther Holder. Holder got a hole Luther and got out to the 45. The so he picked up about six yards. Good carry by Holder. What this is doing to West Mac is, is getting them a, a moving the ball. They've got a good drive going. They put a couple of first downs together. But when they get on the other side of the field, they're going to have to take it in. They're not going to be able to run, take five or ten minutes off the clock, and then have to punt. They're going to have to come up with some big third down plays if they're going to run this type of offense down the field. And the quarterback wants to keep himself this time. Does a good job. He was being pressured by 51 the whole way, and I think that's Winchester. But he got it across midfield to the 49-yard line. Well, no, they'll mark it just on the inside of the 50 into the Ram territory, so that's a gain of about five. Winchester hadn't held on that time. McGowan had a big gainer. So McGowan is up to about 92 yards. We got a flag down there. I don't understand. I didn't see, I didn't see him make any contact. Up offside. So I guess, I guess they, they must have made some contact there. So that's going to give them a first down at the 44. So They didn't ask me what I was seeing, did they? <laughs> Threw the flag anyway. And, of course, the other the conference, the playoff picture, three teams that go to the playoffs this year from the southwestern four and right now it appears to be all wrapped up ashbrook at four and oh in conference hunter huss at three and one in conference and east mech at three and one no teams close to them and so it should be those three teams in the playoffs from that conference it's just a question as to who's going to end up where uh in respect to the top three positions give to Hughes, and Hughes doesn't have a lot of run. He maybe got two on the play. The defense is there. And he's carried the last three times he's had the ball. He's only gotten about two yards per carry. So the defense of Harding is keen on Ray Hughes. Two time back from West Mech showing a lot of guts, Jeff. He's, he's taking a chance. His team's taking a lot of time off the clock, but they're still moving the ball down the field. We're going to have a penalty. So that's not going to help them very much. You know, it's a big boy, too. Holding. That is a, a major penalty. That's going to hurt extremely. And I think what Coach Hambacher probably was thinking is we run a certain type of offense. We know how to run it. Let's stay with it. The game is not over yet. Let's try to go a far offense and see if we can get back in it rather than going with something we're not familiar with. Because our chances of success would be that much less. He's hoping that the uh, night air will catch a nip in Anthony Houston's arm and to come out and wrench it in the fourth quarter, I guess. Well, that time McGowan didn't like what he saw, had to take a timeout, and that means they're only going to have two left. That is, could be a very costly timeout if West Mech ends up getting back in this game and needs to score they on their last drive. But he's going to come over and talk to Tim Heimbacher. Of course, this is an important drive. They've got to produce. The inductees are Johnny Sabers. The, the game is seven. not over with yet, but it's awful bleak right now for West Mac because they've got to score 21 points. Harding cannot score at all, and West Mac, uh, the offense, the way they've been running, they use about uh, six, seven minutes of drive, and you just don't have that much time unless you do exactly what we said, unless you shut Harding down completely, and I can't see that happening uh, three straight times, especially judged from the way they have played offensively. They've only been stopped one time tonight. Remember tonight's game. They're gonna have to get some quick turnovers to get back in the ball game. That's exactly and right. That's what they need. They've got to get, get some breaks in. But first this offense has got to get clicking. The ball is marked at the 47 yard line. It's gonna be first down and long. About 18. Howell is lined up to the near side. 
84 to the far side. Back to pass, McGowan. McGowan throwing, and all oh, that's washed by Howell. Howell lost his footing, got back up, tried to get to the ball, but couldn't pull it in. So it's incomplete. And we talk about uh, what Harding said they had to do coming into the last game. They said they had to contain Derek McGowan. In the passing game, they have done that. McGowan has thrown eight times, only completing one pass. That was a 71-yard touchdown. And he's also thrown an, in an interception. When they were talking about containment, they were talking about his running ability, I'm sure, but uh, it was a big shocker for him to hit that big pass. Well, you know, he's been a high percentage passer. That one got tipped up by Chad Armstrong. Trying to go back to the well again. That was the same play they ran last time. And uh, Chad Armstrong has seen that before. He had nothing to do with it. You know, before Chad almost had an interception and was very upset about it. This time he got a good tip that time, and Harding was hoping to uh, maybe use the tip drill and come up with another turnover. But what they have instead is have put West Mecklenburg in third and long. They need about 19 for first down. So assumably another passing situation. Might be a good time for a screen if they're planning on going for fourth down. Back to pass, and they come with a wholesale blitz. Pass is complete to Hughes, and Hughes has got He's off for a touchdown. Ray Hughes has got an outline and Tony Walker. Touchdown. That was a screen play set up on the left-hand side that time. And what a, a, <laughs> what a play that is for West Neck, a 53-yard play. Great use on the reception, and you couldn't have called it better. In fact, you called it, Tom. Let's try to set up a screen. I don't think you were talking about a 53-yard screen, but... Well, that would do. I could see where <laughs> that would uh, help the West Neck call. But a great play, nonetheless. Harding came on with a wholesale blitz. McGowan did well under the pressure and just waited and released the ball at the right time, got it to use and used did the rest, a 53-yarder for a touchdown. So both touchdowns for West Neck have been long pass plays. The point after is up, it is good. And it is now 28 to 14 with three minutes and 20 seconds left in the third quarter. So now, now we have a once that's, again. That's right. A quick turnover right now by Harding. I'm not wishing anything bad against them. But they've got to come down and at least take a lot of time off this clock in Houston, the way he throws. Uh, he can either put points on the board in a hurry or a couple of quick mistakes, and West Mac can be back in this ball. Game. That's right. And Ray Hughes on it, but it was just a brilliant play. And Antonio Walker came over there. You saw him come over, try to get the angle on Ray Hughes, and he didn't have the angle to get, and he just... He just buzzed right by him. Uh, the and Walker is no slow gentleman himself. So that was a great run by Ray Hughes. Walker had, uh, I think Hughes had a chance to stop Walker on the shuttle pass play at the end of the first half and couldn't catch him. And then Hughes gives him the same treatment, a dose of his own medicine. It's amazing how much faster you run when you got that goal line in front of you and nobody by, and uh, somebody on your rear end. Doug Miller did the onside kick attempt. It looked like 24, Damon Bullock. Then. He got the ball. And he held on to it. So, yeah, Damon Bullock, 24, I believe. Coach Hambacher pulling out all the stops. Not a bad play. That ball took a couple of weird hops, which it's known for. And uh, nice recovery that time by Bullock. And so first and ten, the Harding Rams. Pitch out, the Byers near side. Byers. Strung out, the defense is there. Good defensive job by West Mech. Byers is contained and might have gotten two out of it. And we see the West Mech defense come out fired up. Byers couldn't get it from the outside. The biggest lift for the West Mech offense right now would be for them to get the ball back, not exactly. let Harding pick up that first down and make them punt. Exactly. Second down. And about uh, nine yards needed for the first down. Receivers to both sides. Houston calling signals. They're playing too far off Stevenson. They're coming with pressure. He's going to get a pass to Stevenson. You called it. Stevenson for the move on. First down. And he's still on his feet. Goes out of bounds at about the 38. So it is gain of 10, 15, about 17 yards. Let's see if that's where they're going to mark it. No, make it a 15 yarder. They're going to mark it just outside the 40. So it's good for about 15 yards to Stevenson. And he just, uh, Houston and Stevenson have just been hitting on that pass they're just consistently all night. They're too far off of him. They're letting it, they're giving him a, a little short out. And once he catches it, makes a move upfield. 
That's right. You can't give that much room. You can back Go for deep. all of it. He's going for Stevenson in the end zone, and Stevenson dives and can't get it. It was just a little bit long, and Hughes was back there defensively for West Mecklenburg, and that was just a little bit too deep. A successful night for Anthony Houston and company. In the passing game, he's completed for 223 yards in the ball game, unofficially. You got to like the play call by Harding. They're not going to sit on the laurels right now. They get picked up a big gainer on a little short down and out, so they try to suffer him in on going for the down and out move and go straight up on a fly pattern, and Houston just didn't hit his man. And they got the two good receivers on the side again. They're going to use them as a decoy, though, and they go to Byers. And Byers is going to ramble up the middle for a gain of about four. So that was a little bit of a surprise call. Actually, they got three. Third down and six. That's a good time to call that play, though, because of the passing ability of Stickon Houston. A draw play works to perfection if it's done right. And that time they just didn't get the yardage, but they're still playing way too far off of, uh, it looks like Johnson's the man they're too far off of this time to look for him to do a little down and out. Johnson and Stevenson had a lot of